I have just discovered how to make your modded Xbox 360 output at 50 hertz instead of 60 hertz. Now, why is this important to me? Why is this so exciting? Uh, that's because all the Rock Band games before Rock Band 3 had a built-in strum limit in the engine uh, that limited how many times per second you could strum before it just stopped accepting inputs. So NTSC regions run at 60 hertz, which is 60 frames per second, and PAL regions run at 50 hertz. But when these early Rock Band games run at 60 hertz, the, the strum limit is about 15 notes per second. And uh, when it runs at 50 hertz, it's about 17 notes per second. So you gain about two extra strums per second, uh, which is actually, it's massive in some songs like uh, Green Grass and High Tides, the solo 2E, and uh, East Jesus Nowhere. That, that goes from impossible to possible. So I made this discovery when I purchased this console here from a seller in the UK. This is a modded Xbox 360. Um, so I assumed that I'd be able to output it at 50 hertz when I got it here. But uh, to my surprise, no, there were no PAL settings to be found anywhere on this console. Um, so after a couple hours of researching and, uh, and troubleshooting, I found the reason why this thing wasn't able to output at 50 hertz, even though it was from a PAL region. And that's because the ability for a console to output at 50 hertz is, uh, is just an option that you can enable or disable in the NAND when you flash this. Since it's a modded console, you have to, you have to create your own modded NAND, and uh, you have to manually enable the ability for it to output at 50 hertz. And thankfully, that's super simple to do, actually. And uh, I'll walk you through how you do it right now. All right, so there's a couple of prerequisites involved with this. Uh, one, obviously, you'll need a modded Xbox 360, but that's a given. Uh, and two, most importantly, you'll need AV cables for your Xbox. Uh, these are component cables as well. It has two sets. One is just the standard AV and one's component, and then it has the audio, audio jacks over here. Um, if you have a set of these, there's a little uh, switch on the side. If it'll focus, it says TV and HD, HDTV. Uh, you need to have it set to TV. Uh, PAL 50 will only output if it's at, uh, set to TV. So the reason that you need to get AV cables uh, is because 50 hertz uh, on PAL will only output when you're using AV cables, the standard AV. It won't output through HDMI because that's a 60 hertz signal only. Uh, that means if you're using an older TV or monitor, um, you might get lucky and you have these uh, these ports, but I'd venture a guess that most um, most people don't have those kind of ports on their TVs anymore. Um, so if that's the case and you only have an HDMI signal, you, you're going to have to get a converter of sorts. These are just two cheap ones I bought on Amazon. They're both Enco products. Uh, they work great. They look great, uh, especially for an Xbox 360. But I use, uh, for my videos, a RetroTank 5X. And this thing is extreme overkill for an Xbox 360. You don't need this, trust me. <laughs> uh, RetroTank 2X is also a very popular one and probably a much better value. Uh, for your money, that's like 80 bucks, and this this is like 300 bucks. So I'd recommend if you really want the best quality available, and you you're gonna use it for more than just an Xbox 360, <laughs> get a RetroTank 2X. But uh, but generally, if if you don't want to spend that much, these will give you 99.9 percent .9 of the quality that you'll get with a RetroTank. It, it's it's honestly pretty good. You'll also need a way to get uh, files from your Xbox onto your computer, and vice versa. So the easiest solution, obviously, is just a little flash drive. Uh, but if you have FTP set up on your console, you could do that as well. It'll work just as fine. So, over on the console, if you don't already have a flash drive that is formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format, go over to System Settings, then Storage, and then Format your flash drive. Once it's done, unplug it from the Xbox and plug it into your PC. Alright, if you don't already have the Simple NAND flasher on your console, go down in the description, click the link, and download it from here. And when you have it downloaded, simply extract the folder, and then place that folder in your flash drive or bring it over via FTP, whatever you're using. So now with the USB device plugged into the Xbox 360, I'm gonna go to the file manager and navigate to the USB drive and then uh, copy over the simple NAND flasher folder. I'm just gonna put it wherever I keep the rest of my homebrew apps, which for me is just in a folder called apps. Yours can be wherever you want it to be. Just make sure you put it somewhere where your Aurora scan paths can find it. So now that the folder's copied over, I'm just going to restart Aurora so that Simple NAND Flasher will show up with the rest of my apps. So now I'll run Simple NAND Flasher. So, it's started up and you can see that it has saved your CPU key to a text file. And it's telling you your, your current dashboard, your dash launch version, all that. And at the bottom it says, press X if you want to dump your NAND with raw dump. That's what we want to do. Uh, so just press X and it will start dumping your NAND. Now this may take a while for you, uh, it depends on your system. This one didn't take that long at all, but the UK one that I bought uh, took a very long time because it was a big block Jasper, which means it had a 512 megabyte NAND. So just sit tight and let it do its thing. And now once it's done, just click any button and it'll exit the app. So now we need to go get that NAND that we just dumped and put it on our computer. So I need to go to the file manager, navigate to the folder that we have our simple NAND flasher in, 
and then grab the flashdump.bin file and put that on the flash drive. I also grabbed the CPU key and I'd recommend you do the same just so you have a backup copy of it, uh, but it's not necessary, I just like to have it. So now we need to download JRunner, uh, so just go into the description, click on the JRunner link, and it should bring you to the latest release on Octal's GitHub, uh, and just click this one right here, JRunner with extra zip, and it should download it. And now once it's downloaded, I'm just going to extract it, and then we can open up JRunner. So now with JRunner downloaded, I'm going to move over the, the flashdump.bin uh, file we got from dumping our NAND on the console, and also the CPU key.txt. Shouldn't need it, but it's nice to have. And now I'm going to go back to JRunner, and I'm going to load source, and I'm going to select this flashdump.bin. And I just have it on my desktop for uh, demonstration purposes, but you can put it wherever you want. So now with it loaded, you'll see that everything should be automatically populated. Uh, the kernel version, the console type, the glitch type, everything is already preloaded. So at this point, I'd like to mention that be very careful with what you do here because if you if you type something incorrectly or if you click something you aren't supposed to, you can and will brick your console. And the only way to fix it would be to tear it apart and manually flash the NAND by connecting a NAND flasher and not doing it through software. So be warned, be very careful, know what your console is. If, if it's an RGH 1.2, make sure that that box is selected. If it's an RGH 3, Select Glitch 2 and then click the checkbox RGH3. I had to do that with my UK console when I did this. So just be careful. So now here's the part that you've all been waiting for. Here's the actual important part. Go to the XE build uh, section of JRunner. Click on XB settings. Click on advanced XE build options. And go to machine options 2. And right here at the very top, AV region. It says here, it sets the video output mode. Known values are NTSC and PAL. So in the AV region text box, type in 0x300, which is the PAL region code, and then click OK. And now you can see here it says uh, edited options selected. So now we are good to rebuild our NAND. So now at this point we can just click on create XE build image and we'll create our updated NAND that'll have uh, PAL settings on it. So now the new NAND is built, shouldn't take long at all. Uh, you'll notice in the load source text box that uh, the, the file path has changed. That's where the new NAND was saved to. So if you need help finding it, just follow that uh, that file path and you should be able to find it. So now I've opened up the folder where I put my updated flash. So now I just need to uh, open up my USB drive again and drag and drop upd flash.bin onto it. You can also check to verify that the AV region was set properly to PAL by opening up this log file that it creates. Scrolling down a little bit to where you find the SMC config right here. Uh, this is the original SMC config info, and you can see that the AV region is set to NTSC, but if you scroll down a bit more, it checks for a patch, which is what we applied, and there we go, the AV region is set to PAL50. Alright, so I've inserted the flash drive back into my console, and now I'm going to navigate to the USB drive in the file manager, and then copy the upd flash.bin file that we just created, that's our, that's our new NAND that we're going to flash onto the system. So I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going, to go, I'm going to go to where we have our simple NAND flasher folder. I'm going to go into it, and I'm going to just paste it in there. So the way this app works is that it checks if there's a upd flash.bin file in its folder, and if there is, it'll, uh, it'll give you some different options. Um, than before because before you could only dump your your NAND now we have a bunch more options we can press A to flash your NAND B if you want to save flash X if you want to dump it again we just want to press A because we just want to flash the NAND we don't need another dump of our, of our old NAND so I'm just gonna press A and now it's asking uh, to confirm us to start the uh, the NAND flash press start and now it's flashing it over all right it's over and uh, now the console is gonna reboot itself with the new NAND Alright, so now your system should have successfully rebooted. If it didn't, you probably bricked it. The only way to fix it from here would be to tear the whole thing apart, solder on an NAND flasher, and flash over your old NAND again, because you know it works. If this happened to you, I'm sincerely sorry. Just know that it's not dead dead. You can fix it. If you don't have a NAND flasher and you don't feel like you could do this yourself, I'm sure you could find a send-in service where somebody would do this for you for relatively cheap. Yeah, so now uh, I just need to unplug I'm going to turn it off, I'm going to unplug the HDMI cable, and I'm going to plug back in the AV cables, and uh, we'll see if we have some PAL settings there. 
All right, I've rebooted the console with the uh, the AV cables plugged in instead of HDMI. As you can probably tell, it looks terrible. <laughs> so now I'm going to go back to the original dashboard. So to do that on my console, I have to go over to system settings, hold down the right trigger, and then press A. So now I can go to the console settings, display, and would you look at that? There's a PAL 50 setting right there. I just have to make sure that it's set to... Uh, 480p and then there's PAL settings that are available. I can go to PAL 60 or PAL 50. It's important to note being in PAL 50 really is only beneficial for playing the Rock Band games. You can't even play Guitar Hero 2 with this. It'll force you to play at PAL 60, so sorry, no 360 Trogdor FCs for you. Don't throw out those HDMI cables yet. So there you have it. That's it. That's all you have to do. And now your Xbox can out output at 50 hertz if your heart so desires. And uh, yeah, I th this is really cool, I think, because uh, we just got our first ever Greengrass and High Tides FC on Rock Band 1 on original hardware, not emulator. Uh, we got the first FC of that this year, like a couple weeks ago. It was uh, Dina Zord who did it first, and then Steph did it like a couple hours after him. So it, it took almost 15 years for this song to be FC'd on original hardware. And I think we'll be seeing a lot more of them now that this is more of an accessible thing. Now anybody with an RGH uh, can, can do it. It's not region locked anymore. It's not only people in the UK that can do it, you know? So, um... Go out there, go FC, Greengrass and High Tides, Let There Be Rock Live, East Jesus Nowhere, whatever fast drumming song there is that, that, that needs to be FC'd, go do it. I think it's really cool. I'm glad I found this. Uh, yeah, I, I hope you enjoy this uh, as much as I do because I, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. And uh, yeah, have a good one.